in God. Islam, we believe that there's only one God. Yeah. So where do you get two gods from? So those two things don't really add up to you. Shall I, shall I just, there's a, an, an error, a, a, a mistake in your understanding of the Christian faith, in, in what you've explained. Because Christians don't believe that Jesus was praying to himself. We believe that Jesus was praying to the Father. Yeah, which is, which, uh, allow me, to, allow me okay. to address both your points, because you made two points, and there's two points of confusion. Okay. Yeah? It's kind of like if I said that Muslims worship Muhammad, that would be based on an error, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because you know and I know that really m Muslims don't worship Muhammad. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is the equivalent of something like that. You're, you're saying something that we as Christians don't believe. Okay, so you're rejecting something, but you're not rejecting Christianity. No, no. You're rejecting something that you think is Christianity. I believe that the Bible is flawed, but I don't disagree with everything inside it. Yeah, so let, let me just address the first two points that you made. Who is Jesus praying to? How was he praying to himself? And how do you get no, no, two gods? Not himself. Right, well, that's what you said, so that's what I'm addressing. You said that Jesus, how can Jesus pray to himself? We don't believe he was praying to himself. We believe that he was praying to the Father. But then you said, well, how do you get two gods? We Christians don't believe in two gods. We believe in one God. I've never yet any, met anyone that can prove to me that I believe in two gods. We believe in one God that from eternity to eternity, without ever changing or without ever becoming it, has existed as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But this, these Father, Son and Holy Spirit are three persons within one divine nature. Now, let me just explain to you how three can be one and one can be three. Just with you yeah, saying that, I think there's a lot of Christians that have their own little interpretations of it as well. So what you said, and that fellow didn't agree with what you were saying. So in Christianity as well, they have their own little interpretations and it does vary as well. Well, I think, I think actually all Christians agree that there is one God and three persons. But not all Christians are as adept at as explaining that belief as one another. So some Christians are less adept at explaining that than others. So the way he portrayed it was inefficient? Well, I don't know how he portrayed it, and I'm not going to pass comment on, on how he portrayed it, because I wasn't there for the conversation. And I don't think Christians should be eager to condemn other Christians that they've not met. So my, my, my point is that... I don't write the Bible off. I just don't agree with everything in it. Yeah. But what I would suggest to you, I mean, when was the last time that you read the Bible? Three years ago. Three years ago. And, and, and were you always a Muslim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in my experience of speaking to Muslims, and I've spoken to many, many Muslims, there is a consistent misunderstanding of what Christians believe. And it is pro pro propagated here very strongly in the corner. Muslims, for whatever reason, even Muslims that have been corrected and are on record as having been corrected multiple times, will still come back to the corner every week and tell the same thing. Now, for, for someone like you, it, I, I would write it off as ignorance. You know, you've maybe not had a chance to sit down and speak with a Christian. But That's some Muslims are here deliberately lying about what Christianity believes. Jesus prayed to himself. But then there's many people that I've had a conversation with they are saying that Jesus is praying. Yes. But then why would he be praying if he's also claimed as God? He's right. meant to be superior. That is a You're that is a praying to him. That is a fair question. And that's an absolutely fair and question. Like I said, in Islam we think there's only one God. So, so let, let where me, does the concept yeah. of two gods come let, from? Let, let, we, we don't firstly uh, please hear me when I say this. So you, we don't a, believe in two gods. Talk. We don't oh. believe in two gods. Do you believe he's the child of the Father? Do, let, let me, let, yes, yes, we do. Do you, but we don't believe in two gods. So every time you say that, what it's telling me is you're not actually engaging with what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. Engage with what I'm saying in the same way that I engage with what Muslims say about Islam. Don't just repeat something because other Muslims have told you or you've heard no, it on a no, Zakir no, Knight video. Or, yeah. So, so, so what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you is that Christians believe in one God, but we believe that God has eternally existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's our belief. Okay. Now, the obvious question then is, how can three be one and one be three? Because at a very basic level, that sounds contradictory. But actually, if you just take a moment to think about that, it isn't as contradictory as it first appears when you utter it from your lips. And I'll give you an example. Right now, every single person is experiencing as a singularity, as a singular experience, three-dimensional space. 
you are stood right now in three-dimensional space right but you don't think to yourself i'm stood in three-dimensional space you just think to yourself i'm stood in space you experience it as a singularity you register it as a singularity cognitively you you interpret it as a singularity but mathematically it is three-dimensional so three can be one and one can be three so that is not a contradiction and so what I'm saying to you is that I'm inviting you and any Muslim any Muslim to actually engage genuinely in what Christians believe not what you might have misheard or misunderstood Christians as like believe. you asked me did I read the Bible Standard. I told you I read it three years Standard. ago yeah Go on. And now you're telling me what other Muslims are saying to me. But I haven't actually had a conversation with other Muslims. I'm going based off what I think. Well, I just think I just think that what you're saying sounds remarkably similar to what every Muslim thinks. There you go. So, yeah. that so what's that? What, what, but what is that telling us? What is that telling us? Because there are atheists in this park that get what I'm saying. There are agnostics in this park that the, get the what I'm saying. One second, one second, sister. There are Jews in this park that understand what I'm saying. The only people that say the things that you're saying are Muslims. So that tells me, that tells me it's not something about the Bible and it's not something about Christian beliefs. It's something about what Muslims are telling Muslims. Because if a Jew can get it and an atheist can get it and an agnostic can get it, then there's no reason why a Muslim can't unless they're not actually listening to, to it. I think the only person that would listen to you and see you in your perspectives is an atheist. I don't think a Jewish would. I, I, I have known and spoke with Jews who, whilst they disbelieve what I believe, Maybe some, but they understand what we believe and they engage. Them. So what I'm saying to you is that whilst I think that you have received information either indirectly or directly that has prevented you from actually sincerely and honestly engaging with what Christians believe and that's what I'm inviting you to monotheism not polytheism I'm not inviting you to worship three gods I'm inviting you to worship one God now you asked the question about Jesus being the son of the father and you said I thought he was greater. Those were two things that you, you said. see, that's another thing. We yeah. don't believe that God needs any partners. There's only God and God alone. So, and, and also in Christianity, you believe that God is superior too. Well, let me... So then, where does Go on. his son come into it? Isn't God meant to be superior in a way that he doesn't need anyone let, or let, any partners? Yeah, let, 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 me, let me address that point. Because again, it's a fair question. I am interpreting I'm all... To understand. Yeah, completely. And, and at this moment in time, I'm interpreting everything you're saying as being sincere, you yeah. know? So, in terms of our understanding of Christ, our, 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 our interpretation, in terms of our understanding of, of what we believe in this, we believe that, that the Logos, which is another term for Christ, became a man, that he entered into creation, and that we, we actually describe himself as humbling himself like a servant. That is actually almost ad verbatim what he says in scripture, in my scripture. So we actually believe that the, the, the Logos, the Son of God, lowered himself to the status of a servant. Yeah? And by doing so, helps to redeem humanity. Okay? And in that status as a humble servant, he then, in his humanity, prays to the Father like every good human being should. Okay? So it's not a contradiction. It's not that God has suddenly stopped being God. Or that somehow God is worshipping himself or praying to himself. It is that the Logos, the Son of the Father, has become human and continues the dialogue that he has had with, from eternity past with the Father. But now he's doing it as a man rather than as the divine son. See, that's hard for me to understand. Because yeah. I understand it Fair enough. but we believe completely so much more different. Yeah. So. Sorry, go on. You were saying, I, I missed that. <laughs> Say that last point again. <laughs> Say again, sorry. I said I don't want a full on debate because this no, is the fine. first time when, I've ever come We're just having a conversation. In Islam, yeah. we can't comprehend that concept because we don't believe in it. I would say to you that, that in Islam has nothing to do with it. It's about know, it's about me, whether you it's as an hard for me to grasp yeah. the concept that Jesus put himself in a human sort of way yeah. when he is meant to be as equal to God. 
for us, God is not, he, like, we don't know how God looks like. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Do you believe that, that God is all powerful? Yeah. Do you believe that, that there are things that God can't do? No, there is nothing God can't do. So can God enter into his creation if he chooses to do so? If he chooses to do so, but I don't see that happening. I don't see why or how or... Okay, so that's, that's, that's where we can continue our conversation. Because the, our question is not whether God can. Yeah, of course you can ask, but let me just let me just. Wait, wait, I didn't finish my yeah, point. It defeats the purpose of being God if he enters into a human creation. Well, no, it, would it, depend, it depends on your vision of who God is. Because we as Christians see God as love. Now, if you love someone, like I imagine someone you do love, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your husband, you know, someone you love. If they were in trouble on the end of a sewage line and the only way that you could rescue them was to crawl through the gr all the crap, all the sewage, would you crawl through all the sewage to get to them to save them? Yeah. Right. Well, we see God as love. So it is not against the purpose of God to enter into the filthiness of creation if by doing so he redeems that creation. And that is the Christian understanding of God. We see God as some as love, as pure love. So do we. Well, then your God, like let, let's do, we just talk about God not needing partners, right? The the contrast to God's love in Islam, as I understand Islam, is God is all merciful, correct? Yeah. Right. So give me an example of mercy. Mercy, okay, so I smacked you across the phrase. Yeah. I then I repented to God. Yeah. That's and he forgives me, that's mercy. That's an example of mercy, I agree. Can you give me another one? Another one is to not do it to you and God put that into my heart. So not smacking me across the face. I'm just when I, an example, yeah, yeah, no, sorry. these are good examples. <laughs> but the point that I'm making to you, right? And we could do this experiment, this thought experiment. You know. But every example of mercy is an example of a transaction between two parties. Party A and party B. In the two examples you gave, Allah is merciful to you because you don't smack me across the face. You are merciful to me in your second example because you don't reply to my smacking you across the face. We like smacking me in a bit. So there's two parties in a transaction. So in other words, we cannot conceive of mercy apart from it being a transaction. Which means for Allah to be all merciful, there must be a partner, another, to whom he is merciful. Well, we do connect with God, but I don't understand your point. So how can Allah be all merciful before creation? Who is he Sorry. being merciful to? To us. But like oh, he's been merciful on my life as well. Okay, so that's right so that so to be merciful requires two parties. So it needs a partner. And that's an Islamic concept. Islam teaches that Allah is all merciful. Logically, you can't think of mercy without it having a transaction between two parties. Yeah, between me and the Most High. Exactly. So Allah needs you to be merciful. No, he doesn't need me. So who was he merciful to before you? See, there's several people around us. So who was if he I'm, merciful before merciful, them? Then he'll be merciful to someone else. And okay, even so if let's... I'm not merciful to the Most High, he can still be merciful back yeah, to me. Yeah, so let's, let's take it I all the really way back. Let's take it all God. the way back. So who was Allah merciful to before he created anything at all? Sorry? Who was Allah merciful to before he created anything at all? When the there was prophets. just Allah? The no, when there was just Allah, before the prophets. There will be nothing to be merciful to. Bingo! So okay. Allah can't be merciful unless he's got a partner. I didn't know. He don't have a partner. We are his people. We submit to him. Yeah. But he doesn't have a partner. But my point to you he is... He created us, so we can go about our life, but then we need to bear in mind how we go about our life, because God created us. Do you see my point, we sister? We are submitting to the Most High. There is There's a connection and an interaction, Correct. but we are not His partners. I, 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 what I'm pointing out to you is there is an internal inconsistency to the logic of Islam. It is saying that, oh, we can't believe in the Trinity because that implies partnership, which incidentally it doesn't, it doesn't at all. To us it does. 
Well, the, but that's because you're, you're believing in a, a mischaracterization of the Christian faith. But I'm engaging say, in... Let's say that is the case. Yeah. Well, continue. So, but what I'm saying to you is that within the concepts of Islam, there are inconsistencies. Okay. Yeah, and like, like the one I've just given you. Allah being all merciful, but he can't be merciful until he's got someone to, to be merciful. You. Yeah, but, but the point... Yeah, I am connected with the most high, but so I don't need to be that's a transaction. So that's a transaction. That's yeah, a transaction. It's a communication. So in other words, for Allah to be all merciful, he needs someone to be merciful to. No, he don't need to be merciful to us, but he is. Do you right. get it? Right, my point but my point is if Allah is not what he says he is, okay. then then when he says that he is a thing and he isn't that thing, that would mean that Allah is lying. But if Allah is what he says he is, then that means those things can't change. They have to always be there. So one second. So so by contrast, what I'm saying to you is that that I reject Islam partly because of things like the, the self contradictions within Islamic teaching, like the one I've tried to elucidate today. By contrast, when I meet Muslims who reject Christianity, when I, don't I when, 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 let me finish, I disagree sister. With things in it. No, so you, that's a re form of rejection. So when you reject and Muslims reject Christianity. When I speak to them and ask them why are they rejecting Christianity, what I find invariably is that they're not actually rejecting what I believe, they're rejecting something they think I believe. Perfect. And when we explore the thoughts, it doesn't marry up to what I believe Opinion anyway. Is not a fact. What did you want to say, brother? Go on, bro. You wanted to jump in. Just regarding the, the mercy, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. You to Just regarding the, the mercy according to Muslim scholars, to the best of my knowledge, uh, when it comes to mercy, they speak about two names. They are mentioned in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You know that. Yeah, yeah, ar-Rahman yeah. ar-Rahim. Yeah. They interpret ar-Rahman as the one who has this mercy. Yes. As, as self-attribute. Yes. And ar-Rahim, the mercy which needs the uh, the one to whom he is merciful. Yes, the one who needs. So Allah has a need. What kind of need? How do you define? Well, that? you just said it. These were your words. Okay, we're talking about we're talking about attributes of Allah. Yes. yes. So scholar says Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Yes. Do you agree that these two are, are talking about mercy? Uh, it would appear so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you, you seem to have knowledge about it, and that's why I'm assuming you yeah. know these things. Yeah. So Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim are two attributes, two names of Allah. Yes. But the first one is as the uh, the mercy which is self self. Self-evident evidence or something, which is in the self, in itself. And the other one is an action. Is that that? That's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is the action? Is so? Does it not say? Uh, is not one of the ninety-nine names of Allah that Allah is the all-sufficient? By the way, there isn't only ninety-nine. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's more. But but in in the ninety-nine names, one of them is all-sufficient, isn't it? Yeah, self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. So not needing another. He doesn't need right. another to exist. But, but for Allah to be merciful, he needs another to be merciful too, right? No, he doesn't. So give me an example of mercy that doesn't involve a transaction. No, I'm sorry, I just told you that what uh, the name of Rahman it means something which is in the self. I thought Rahman was most magnificent. You no, know, there are things which are lost in the translation. Well, I thought Rahman meant no, uh, the, the uh, Bismillah. Yeah, Ilah Rahman, Ilah Rahim, it's, it's, uh, the most magnificent, the most merciful. The most That's how it's gracious, the most merciful. Most, most gracious, the most yeah. merciful. Sometimes the most beneficent. Yeah. Uh, right, but but the point is, so merciful is distinct. Rahim is distinct from Rahman. Yeah. Right. So, my my point to you is, my point to you is, Rahim requires another. Okay. And if it, if I'm wrong, give me an example of Rahim without another involved. Can I talk about something different? No, I want you to answer my question. Okay. Uh, for, for the moment, let me, let me clarify this point. Regarding Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. If you see throughout the Arab history, no one is called by this name. Ar-Rahman. Or, or no one has this attribute. They are, for example, this person is merciful to his father, to his mother, to his brother. In Arabic, we say he's Rahim. So he shows mercy to this person. When it comes to Allah, he's Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. It means his mercy is not only, uh, does not only 
involves this connection with his creation, but it's within himself. Having this attribute, do you believe that you can have some attributes that you don't need to, to connect them with others? Are there are things that there, there are, are there in are, your there, character yeah. that there, you don't there, need to connect with yes, others. Yes, but mercy is not one of them. But mercy is not one of them. There are things that you can have within your own character that are not dependent upon another. But mercy doesn't fall into that category. Mercy falls outside of that category and falls into one of those categories, like love, that requires another. Okay. So now going back to the question that you haven't answered, give me an example of Rahim that doesn't require a, a, a transaction between two parties. Rahim. Rahim, uh, yeah, mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rahim by definition means there is another party. Thank you. So, in other words, for Allah to be the most merciful requires, by default, that there is someone else to be merciful to. Is that not logical? I told you that there is a Rahman first. No, we're talking about Rahim. We're yeah, not we're talking, talking about Rahim. Rahman. We're, with Rahim we're, to we're talking Rahman. about Rahim. So, Allah requires someone else to be most merciful, right? When you say requires someone else, if you if you want to contradict the self-sufficient, then you have to define the self-sufficient first. Yeah, let's do, let's talk about that. Okay. What does self-sufficient mean to you? Well, he doesn't need someone else to right. exist or someone to survive. Or yeah, and he doesn't need someone else for his his other attributes. He doesn't need. He's not dependent on someone else for his that's eternal not, nature, not for his knowledge, for is, his. Is it dependency? Well, if you need someone else to be merciful towards, yes, that is dependency. Okay, I'll, uh, I can ask you. Can I, uh, Question. God created it's an ontological the dependence. God created the universe. Yes. Yes. We both believe that. Yeah. So God had had the power to create the universe. Yes. Did He need to create the universe to show that He had the power? No. Here we go. No. Hold on one second. We're talking about mercy, not power. No, we're talking about God's attributes. Well, yes, exactly. So we're talking yes. about one specific attribute of mercy that requires, by your yeah. own admission, yeah. another party. When I'm right, one second, right? Now this is a self-contradiction because the 99 attributes of Allah supposedly state that Allah is self-sufficient. In other words, he is not dependent on anyone for his attributes, for himself. But mercy has no concept or significant meaning other than the fact that there is someone to be merciful to. And thus you've got a contradiction between Allah being the all-merciful and self-sufficiency. Because you can't be merciful without a transaction between two parties, but Allah is supposed to be able to be all of his attributes without another party. You lost me. I'll do it again. Thank you. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you very much. Here's the contradiction. Uh, premise one. Um, mercy requires that there are two parties that can perform a transaction. Well, I told you this scholar, right. this scholar live you in Islam. Rahman Premise two. Premise two. Yeah? You, you, you kept trying to talk about Rahman. I'm talking about Rahim. Well, they, yeah. they, they both talk about mercy. They're not. They they're, 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 I'm being moved by the cameraman. One second. So, like, Rahman, we're talking about Rahim. Stop trying to change the subject. No, we're, we're, trying to we're, we're talking about subject. Rahim. We're talking about, the, the we're talking about Rahim. Mercy. One second. We're talking about Rahim. Yes. Premise one. Premise one is that you cannot be merciful without a someone to be merciful to. Premise two, that if you are merciful to another party, you are dependent upon that party to be merciful. Conclusion, Allah is not self-sufficient because Allah requires another party to be merciful to. Therefore, he is not self-sufficient. So, so you, where's, you the, your, where's the problem with my logic? Yeah, you made your, uh, your assumptions and then you built the conclusion upon your assumptions. Okay, so tell me where's the flaw in my logic? I said that the scholarly view of Muslim scholars yeah. is that Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are both linked to mercy. No, and then I said no, Rahman is about being uh, gracious. No. Rahim is merciful. They both. They are consistently no. translated as different yeah. words yeah. and you're trying to blur that line. No, 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 I'm not blurring that line. Yeah, I, I agree that they are translated this way and I... And I, and I and I gave the translation in the same time you were good. You said that most gracious, most beneficent, and most uh, another one. So I have no problem with Bismillah, the... Al Rahman, Al Rahim, most gracious. That's the translation. Yeah, you are trying to blur Rahman with Rahim 
because of the self-contradiction of the idea of Rahim with the idea of self-sufficiency. I'm not bringing anything new. I just convey the scholarly view of Muslim scholars. Yes. Interpretation. And there is a logical flaw within their premises. No, like there is a logical say. flaw in yours. Because you're trying to say that Allah can be self-sufficient even in His mercy when His mercy requires someone else to be self-sufficient to and that is a contradiction. Okay. Again, I, I find no problem in what I say. Because Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, even, even as an Englishman who is first language is English, you can see the similarity in the Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the same, the same letters. They are, they are both related to mercy. The first one is in Arabic, Ar-Rahmatu Al-Wasi'a, or Ar-Rahmat Dhatiya, which is in the self. The second one is Ar-Rahma al wasila which is something which is uh, which transcends or something which goes to another part. Yeah. So there is no problem with mercy. So no, there From is a Muslim a problem. scholarly point. There of is view. a problem if you believe in the idea that Allah is all sufficient. Is he all sufficient or partially sufficient? No, he's partial. All sorry? He's self sufficient. Self sufficient. If he is self sufficient and that sufficiency is all sufficiency, then that means there isn't space for your distinction. Because what you're doing is you're giving with one hand and then you're taking away with the other. You're saying that actually Allah is all sufficient, but really when I say all sufficient, what I really mean is only partially sufficient because there are some things he's not sufficient in. But you can't you, have it both ways. You're saying that he needs someone to be merciful. I told you well, that he is merciful. Let's, let's try and move the conversation place. forward by just thinking clo more closely about what self-sufficiency means. What does sell? What does do, is Allah all sufficient or partially sufficient? Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Do you do you mean this, do you mean this in in every sense or in some senses? No, he doesn't need anyone. In any sense. I'm sorry. In any sense or in some senses? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're not so. You're not sure whether Allah is no. self-sufficient no. in every sense. I don't know the, the, the thread you want to follow, that's why I said I don't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anyone. Doesn't need anyone. Yes. That, those are your words. Does not need anyone. So how can he be merciful without someone to be merciful to? I told you the Muslim point of view. But you're just not engaging with what's right in front of you, bro. You're trying to argue that Allah is all sufficient in every sense. This is exclusionary language. This means in etoto in Latin. It means in everything. But then, but then, when I point out the contradiction to you, you try to parcel that off and, and separate that from the rest. You can't have it both ways. If Allah is all sufficient in every sense of the word, then he does not need anyone for anything. But you have already admitted that for Allah to be merciful, he requires someone to be merciful too. And that is not self-sufficiency. So where does the contradiction lie? Is Allah all merciful and not self-sufficient? Or is Allah all self-sufficient and not all merciful? Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman means Rahman Dhatiya, which is in the self. Before he created his creation, he was Ar-Rahman. And he was Al-Qawi, before, before he okay. was the powerful, yep. even before creating this thing. Okay. And he had the knowledge, Al-Alim. Yep. Yep. So after, the, after creating the creation, what was the difference? So are you, saying that, are you saying that after creation, he then becomes Rahim? No, he is a Rahim. It means he so, has. The... If he was Rahim before creation, who was he Rahim to? He had. There's a contradiction in Islamic Tawheed. Is the is the problem? Uh, I, well, you, of course, you would say that, but I'm pretty sure everyone else can get what I'm saying. Do you get what I'm saying? Yep. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah there's so three people get what I'm saying. The only people that are saying I'm not making sense are the Muslims. So you have to Do you get what I'm saying, sir? There you go. Four people get what I'm saying. You don't. Maybe you should go back to school. So go back to go back to creation, right? You tried to argue that Allah was Rahman before creation. You keep trying to move the topic of conversation to the Rahman when I want to talk about the Rahim. Yeah, because you... Was Allah Rahim before creation? We believe that the attributes of God... Yes. ...do not need the creation. 
they do not need the creation. You all heard that. They do not need the creation. So in other words, Allah doesn't need the creation to be Rahim, the most merciful. So now give me an example of mercy that is not involving a transaction between two parties. Within the human realm. No, any, any, any transaction, any transaction. Within the human realm, of course. Give me an example that doesn't involve humans. Humans. Yep. Allah Who is he merciful to? He's merciful. Himself? He Was Allah merciful to himself? He is merciful to himself? In himself. Before Not creation. No, Rahi mercy is an action. That's the point. You're defining mercy as an action. That is, mercy cannot exist in your heart without doing anything to another party. So you, so you can't have the intent. But well, what I'm saying is that, that that intention means absolutely nothing at all unless it is something that is acted on. Well, that that it, intention. Is it, is it mercy? That intention. Is it mercy? No. Mercy it need it require. It, it's, it's nothing. It's an intention. I can intend. One second. I can intend to help the poor, can't I? I can intend that. But unless I actually take my money out of my wallet and give it to the poor man, my intention counts for nothing. But the, inten but the, the, the intention is mercy. No, brother, the intention is meaningless at all unless there is something to do it to. If there are no poor people, I wouldn't have the intention to help them. Then that comes down to your own opinion. So, so what, what we're saying is, what we're saying is that Allah's intention is, is some amorphic, non-descriptive, nebulous, undefined reality until there is something to define it within. Right, so give me an example of mercy that isn't a transaction. Within the human realm, yeah, it's a transaction. Right, so all of our reasoning tells us that it's a transaction. All of our reasoning tells us that it's a transaction. Yeah? That it is no good simply to say, well, I got the intention to be merciful, but not actually do it to someone. So in other words, to be merciful requires a creation, which means that Allah is not self-sufficient in his attributes. He requires something to be merciful to. Is it a primary choice? Is it a primary choice? His attribute of being merciful means from day one. Day one? To whom? But but to whom is he merciful to? Before creation, who is he merciful to? The cre creation of everything. The heavens, the earth and everything in between. Yeah, well, what I would... Would you agree that he can't be merciful to himself? You don't agree or you do agree? You don't agree that Allah can't be merciful to himself. Are you suggesting that Allah has sinned in some way that he needs to give himself mercy? See, what you're doing is you're comparing him to a human, a human element. He's not human, bro. Get that, get that you, in your you mind. Saying, He's not human. Okay, so He's let's, a creator. Let's he, talk he doesn't about work the way we do. Let's try and move this conversation forward a bit because we're, we're kind of going round in circles. People, people, no, no, it is healthy. I always find it funny. I always find it, I always find it funny that the Muslims find criticism of their religion, unhelpful dialogue, but never go round to the Dawah team, ever. Never go round to the Dawah team and tell them that their criticisms of Christianity is unhelpful. Okay, but let's try and, let's try and move it. Let's, let's try and move it. Let's try and move the conversation forward. Do you, do you believe, do you believe, do you believe that you are made in the image of God? Do you believe that you're made in the image of God? No. No. Not, not, okay. Not literally, not in the meaning. Of right. So, what, what uh, we Christians believe that we are made in the image of God. Now, let me just explain what I mean by that, because it's important. We believe, and, and I'll explain why it's morally important as well. We believe that we're made in the image of God, and to use an analogy, it's much like a photo of you. Yeah. A photo of you, this, this camera shot of you, will not have your three dimensions, it will not have any of your will or your character, yeah, and nothing like that. But it, no one would look at the image and say, that's not you. They would say, this is an image of you, okay? Likewise, between man and God, there's an ontological difference between God and man, but man is made in the image of God. In other words, what I mean is, 
that we have will like Allah has will. We have um, compassion like Allah has compassion. We have mercy like Allah has mercy. We have um, the, um, the ability to uh, reason like Allah has reason and so on and so forth and, and many other things besides, right? The reason why that's morally important is because from a Christian narrative, that means every person has a dignity given to them by God that is not connected to their ethnicity, it's not connected to their gender, it's not connected to their race or their ability, okay? So it's morally important from a Christian perspective. Now you're saying you're not made in the image of God. Is that right? Can I clarify the Muslim point? Yeah, please. There is this, this, this saying the Prophet Muhammad in which he said, if ever one of you fights against his brother and wants to hit him, uh, avoid the face. Because Allah created Adam on his image. Mm -hmm. So the word image here, people are in Arabic, uh, this he is like, uh, how, to say? how do you say, uh, it's like a pronoun, when it comes, it refers to something that came before we speak. So some scholars say that this ha, he, refers to Adam, that Allah created you and me on the image of Adam. And other scholars say no, it refers to Allah. But Allah created you and me on his image. But when we go through all the, uh, the texts that we have, the scriptures and the, the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we find other attributes of Allah that cannot be likened to our attributes. So, to, for example, Prophet Muhammad says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this uh, nur, light, that if he allows his light to come on earth, it would burn everything because it's so intense. So, does, does my face or your face have this light? Okay, That's so why I said it's not literally the same thing. We, we don't believe in a literal image. We're not saying that it's a physical image. Yeah, We're saying that, that, that and, and to be clear, that's not what Christians believe. We don't teach that man is made physically in the image of God, that he is made in the image of God in the sense that he has will, he has the potential, he can recreate, he can procreate. Spiritual, spiritual he can, it is, it is a, an image within, allow me to it is within, one second, one second, within the inner man. That is our concept of it. But what I heard from you was that Allah, there's something special about the face, that, that, that don't hit the face, you know, um, because, because he's made in the image. I, I'm not interested in, in delving too deeply into that because there's something else that I want to explore. You're saying that you're not made in the image of Allah? Oh, let me put it this way, let me rephrase the question. Is your mercy like Allah's mercy? Can we, can we clarify the point about Allah and the creation? And you can do if you want, but my question yeah, is... I wanted to make, to make a point. Uh, I'm not so knowledgeable about Christianity. So whatever claim you make, I will take it and then make my own research. So I cannot argue about it. But let, 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 let's bro make his point. Yeah, there you go. Okay, He's fair enough. He's given I've got a question for you. Yes. Let's have a more productive conversation. Can you explain to me, do you believe in the Holy Trinity? Okay, so... Can you believe, can you explain to me the, the concept behind the Holy Trinity? Right, so How about the brother, that? The brother, now please notice, his definition, the brother's definition of a more productive conversation <laughs> is to change the topic. Yeah? yeah? But no, we're talking about we're talking the fact... We're talking about the attributes of the creator, but I don't understand. Let's go to the basic of wait, what wait, you believe wait, wait, in, and let's, about, let's talk about that. Because we're this, the God created this in this place, brother, like... You're going to be rude to that's this not man. You're going to be rude to this well, guy. Let you, you, if, you, if you change the topic, if you change the topic and force a different conversation, if you, because we're exploring the, the, the internal contradictions within Islamic Tawheed. So, yeah, yeah, later, later, let me finish this conversation and then, yeah, yeah, and then we'll, then we'll have a talk. Yeah, right. So going back to our topic, right? Or is your mercy, can you be merciful like Allah can be merciful? So you can't forgive someone. Does Allah forgive someone? So you can be merciful like Allah can be merciful. No, not, not, not in that sense. How are they different? Because that's a God and you're human beings. No, but that doesn't answer the question. That's just pointing out the, the fact one's God and one's human. I'm asking how is your forgiveness different? How is your forgiveness? If I punch you in the face in a very unchristian way, and then as a good Muslim, 
not that I think that this is actually the definition of a good Muslim, but you turned around and you went, do you know, I forgive you, Bob, right? How is your forgiveness of my crime towards you different from Allah forgiving you? Well, actually, I, I don't know the right answer for that, but the, 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 general, the general idea I have from scholars is that the attributes of Allah are, uh, are independent. Allah is independent in his attributes. And for example, if I forgive you for punching me in the face, which is something bad, I might still have this, this kind of, I still reminisce this, so remember this action and uh, I might have the, the same feeling from time to time even if I say okay I forgive you but yeah. no problem yeah so one is of a, a perfection to the other an order of perfection like Allah's forgiveness is total and complete but yours isn't maybe if you want to I don't, I don't want to misrepresent you but what, what you're really saying there when you say that what you're really saying is that the difference between your mercy and God's mercy is one of degree. It is a quantitative difference, not a qualitative difference. Because Allah's mercy is complete and total, but yours is a bit marred, yours is a bit more sticky. Thank you. The difference between... Water. Oh, thank you very much. The difference between our attributes and God's attributes is like the difference between us and our creator. Yeah. And uh, but but that's not real. again. You're not. No offense, but you, again, yeah. you're avoiding the point. I want to explain why I give you this answer, because in Islam we are not allowed to, to say things we don't know about Allah. Yeah. And Allah says in uh, two uh, in chapter two, two fifty-five, and they don't don't acquire any knowledge about him except that. Right. That so he, here, here's another internal contradiction within Islam then, because if you're saying that your mercy is not like Allah's mercy. Okay, and we only can conceive of mercy as a transaction and within the idea of forgiveness then when you say Allah is merciful you're not actually saying anything meaningful at all because you're, if you're saying that there is an ontological difference between the mercy that God has and the mercy that you have rather than a qualitative difference of the mercy that God has and the mercy that you have then what you're saying is that when Allah calls himself merciful, he's not actually communicating anything that's intelligible. Because if we have no point of reference for the word, yeah, if we have no point of reference for the word, then the linguistics of the word break down. Which is why, in the Christian worldview, it's important that man is made in the image of God. Because if man is made in the image of God, when we say God is love, for us to have an approximation of what that means, we can refer to what we know to be love in ourselves. But if you're saying that God's mercy is nothing at all like ours, there's an eternal gulf between Allah's mercy over here and man's mercy over there, then that means that the linguistic point of reference disappears and the word mercy means nothing intelligible. You talk about this point in the first point when you said when we talked about Ar Rahman Rahim going back to that point and we agreed that it, it has to do with mercy, it means mercy. And I told you, but what does that mean? Yeah, that's the point. Tell me what mercy means. I don't know how to define it as a feeling or as, uh, as, uh, as you said, intention. One, one, or one I don't know how to define it. You don't know how Honestly. to define it. So, in other words, right, are you saying that because you just yourself within your own competencies are unable to define it? Or are you saying that there's no Islamic definition of it? No, within my, uh, my knowledge. Okay, so I, I understand mercy to be an act of gratuitous, an act of gratuitous. Um, yeah, you expect nothing in return. Forgiveness. Yeah. It's something that, like, you do me wrong, or you or you cannot repay me in any way, and then I gratuitously build you a home, even though you have no means to ever repay me. Or you've done me wrong, and rather than taking out justice against you, I just let it go. So this, is, uh, this is mercy. This is mercy. Would you agree that's mercy? Forgiveness. Oh, well, is there a difference between the two? Okay, let's. Well, let, let, we can use forgiveness because. I'll, I'll, let, no, no, no. Let's not get distracted. Let's use forgiveness because if we're saying Allah is all forgiving, 
and if we're saying that God is all forgiving. Unless we can refer to ourselves to understand what that word means, as I've just done right now, which you seem to go along with, though you redefine it as forgiveness. Well, you, if we are, you lose me from time to time, if, to be honest if we, if, we are, if we are using that as our point of reference, then that means man is made in the image of his creator. And if we don't have that point of reference, and Allah is not, we are not made in the image of our creator, then to speak of Allah being merciful, or of him being all forgiving, doesn't communicate anything at all. Aren't you assuming that you say that you're created in the image of your creator? I believe that... You, what? Makes you like your creator. We have a likeness to our creator. Yes, that is, that is the Christian belief. And that's what I'm inviting you to. And if you think logically, you can see that it makes more sense. If you think logically, it makes more sense. Because if you're saying that Allah is merciful, if we say that God is merciful, and the only way that we can understand mercy is to refer to how we understand mercy from a sociological perspective, an anthropomorphic, anthro anthropological perspective, i.e. one centered on our own experience of human mercy, then that allows us to make sense of the word when we say God is merciful. But if we take away that point of reference and we say that man is not made in the image of creator, then when we say that God is merciful, we can have no understanding of what that means, which means God cannot communicate to us what that means. Logically also, as well as the, the issue about communication, logically also, when we think of what mercy is, we always think of it as a transaction. That's your assumption. Well, you, I invited you to give me an example of mercy that wasn't a transaction and you couldn't. Yeah, because there isn't one. There isn't one. So, exactly, you couldn't give one. And I, I've asked Muslims many times to give me an example of mercy that is not based upon a transaction and they're unable to do so. Do you know why? Because to be merciful requires another, which means that Allah is not all sufficient. So if you can see that there are problems with Islamic Taweed, I invite you to come to something better. The Christian faith, of course. Maybe he was just that by default God Allah. And he was waiting to use his <laughs> right. Exactly. You see, you can't even linguistically. You can't even describe this concept without using words that require dependency. Try again. Well, actually. Yeah. Was asked why did Allah create this, this universe? He didn't need to create this universe. Why did He create it? He said that Allah wanted. He didn't say need. He said that Allah wanted to communicate His attributes to His creation, like mercy, wanted. like uh, like mercy, like forgiveness, and He wanted to have these people who are pious then to. As, as, as a sign of his yep, mercy yep. to send them to heaven. Just think what you've said there, because you've proven my point. You've just said Allah wanted to communicate his attributes to his creation, which means that he requires his, commu his, his creation to communicate. He wanted in the first place. That is a dependency. He wanted. Yes, but the point it's is, choice. it's a dependency. Communicate, which is exactly the point I've been making all the way through this conversation which is that Allah can't communicate his mercy unless he's got a party that he can communicate his mercy to and therefore he is not all self-sufficient. But the point is that he did have those attributes before creating the creation. He wanted, he didn't need the creation. So how did he communicate his mercy before creation? He had it. Who did he communicate? Who was he merciful to? He had, the, he had, he had it as a, a self-attribute. A self-attribute. A self gone. I want to ask something. Is it connected to the topic? Yeah. Okay. I think it's connected to the topic. I think he tried to explain, to explain us how they understand this act of mercy. I think what in my opinion, I think he talked about the Trinity. Yeah. The Trinity. The God. Let me. Ah, oh, you want to talk about Let Trinity? Me. And we're not going to talk about the Trinity. No, no, the no. One no, no. Already to, tried to, that. to explain, to explain what he said, what he tried to say. God. 
he have to he need to let's look at this act of mercy as a manifestation of God. Yeah? God to manifest itself. Yeah? That means when God manifests into the creation, that is uh, we call it Holy Spirit. To see this manifestation we need the information. And then this is a triangle of of, of, of uh, this divine uh, God, divine uh, Trinity. divine Trinity. Trinity, yeah. And uh, we don't this, have. We let, don't. Let, let, let me finish. He tried to explain this divine Trinity as this uh, as this uh, divine nature is not matter. It's not something you you, you existed before the, the creation. But to see it, to, to comprehend it with your with your, our mind or to see it, we need to. We need this manifestation. To, we need this God to manifest into the creation to see through the information that comes through this manifestation. And, uh, to the, see, the, to I, see, I get what he's saying, bro. But what he's saying has an internal internal contradiction within his reasoning. It's like a man on an island. He, his argument is essentially God is a man on an island. He's someone who's predisposed to help the poor, but because he's on his own on the island and there's no poor people, he can't be. Uh, he can't do anything to help the poor. That's the kind of logic that he's using. That is the kind of logic that you're using. You're, 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 you're trying to say that Allah had it within himself to be something, but because there was no one to be that something to, therefore it wasn't expressed. That, that's your argument. So that proves the point I'm making, that to be merciful requires someone else. Well, you have to look I, I'm more. pretty sure that is logical, <laughs> and I'm and I'm the, the only way. Shall I tell you how you can beat me in this argument? No, no I don't want to beat you. I just no, no, want no, to I'm just trying to say. You. I'm just trying to say the way to shut this conversation down is to give me a logical definition, a logical example of mercy that is not a transaction, and you can't do it. Well, I can do it. Can you do it? Can you give me an example of mercy that is not a transaction? In your definition, in front of God's uh, understanding, I think this one makes more sense. Because we can't explain everything, so maybe he's on the island. Why does he have to transact? I mean, well, my point to you is, my point to you is that someone having a predisposition, yeah? It's like me. If I have a predisposition to help the poor, but I never ever help the poor, then that predisposition makes no sense, right? Does it exist or not? That predisposition to help the poor, it wouldn't make sense if there were no it poor. It exists. It wouldn't make sense. It exists. Only if man is made in the image of God. It exists. If man is made in the image of God, it makes sense. Yeah, I told you that there are two, two, two views according yeah. to Muslim scholars. Okay. That man is created in the image of God, or yeah. man is created on the image of, of Adam. But then when but I asked you... we don't take it in the literal, physical... But then physical, when I asked you... Uh, no, neither would... We don't take it in a physical, literal sense either. And, and if Muslims believe that, it's because they've read too much books from Akhmadida and not actually spoke to enough Christians. The, the, the point that I'm making to you is for that linguistically to make sense, man must be made in the image of his God. But then when I asked you... Are you merciful like Allah is merciful? What did you answer? Well, when, when it comes to the concept of mercy... Are you merciful like Allah is merciful? No, no, not like Allah. In, right. any, of, in, in any of his in, attributes. In any of his attributes. So on one hand, so in what way are you like... Or in what way do you carry the image of Allah? Tell me. In what way? Well... Uh, the, if it's not to do with the spiritual character, in what way are you the image of Allah? Uh, I am in no position to give my own opinion because I'm not a scholar. But according to the scholars, the ones who say that the, the pronoun refers to Adam, there's no problem with it. And the ones who said that the pronoun refers to Allah, they brought the, uh, the, the text from the Quran and from Hadith that gives, that gives some uh, explanation about Allah's, uh, Allah's uh, attributes. You, you've not answered my question. In what way are you made in the image of Allah? I'm telling you what the scholars say. I'm no. All you've I'm, said is I'm that they no brought position. some verses out. Yes, yes. yes so yeah, what do yeah, those verses yeah, say? Yeah, the things that the, the sayings of the prophet are the verses from the Quran that talk about Allah. When they brought them together, they saw the difference between. You can understand this hadith throughout those verses and those sayings. You've not said anything. All you've said is that people brought some verses out. Okay, fine, I get it. Some scholars brought some verses out. What did they say? <laughs> Okay. Are you, in yeah. what way, so going back to the original question, in what way 
are you made in the image of God? I've given the Christian definition. It's a spiritual, internal thing. I can be merciful like God can be merciful. I can be forgiving. I can love. I can be compassionate. I can be charitable. You know, I can... I can be... Right, so, so that's a Christian definition. Uh, we believe that they have the image of God. They are the likeness of God. Like a photo is the likeness of me. I can hold up a photo. It looks like me. Everyone can see it looks like me, but in no way is it me. There's a, a, an ontological difference between the two. So what way are you... According to Islam, in what way do you say you're made in the image of God? I told you that I don't have enough knowledge to... to okay, fair enough. You can't answer yeah, that question. Yeah, okay. So you can't answer... So let's move on then. What if you can't the answer the question... The question so the question was, in what, way? In, what way in what way, according to Islamic belief, are you made in the image of God? Uh, conceptually, the mercy, we understand the mercy conceptually. When I say mercy, do you have any understanding of mercy, whether it's, it's, you can put it in words or not? Yeah, mercy is a transaction between two parties that is a gratuitous act that cannot be repaid and is undeserved. That's mercy. That's your, I've given a definition. What's your definition? I can't defer, I can define it, but but I, I understand when you say mercy. I, I can have. Is there something wrong with my definition? <laughs> I, I cannot answer that question. You can't answer that question. Can I suggest to you that there's a better way than Islam? I'm going to end on this because we're just going round in circles now. There's a better way than Islam. We in in this conversation, I, I have received no answer to the internal contradiction within Taweed that says on one hand that Allah is all sufficient. But then on the other hand, that he is merciful. And the fact that we cannot conceive of mercy without it being a transaction between two parties. Which means that Allah can't be all sufficient. Because he can't be merciful without someone to be merciful to. So that's an internal contradiction. No, you ignored the Rahim. You kept trying to change the subject. We were talking about Rahim, not Rahman. Then, we talked about the fact that in Islam, because you have no way, because Allah is so different to his creation and we are not made in his image, that you can't speak about saying God is merciful because that doesn't mean anything in any communicative sense without using an anthropomorphic, anthropological perspective, i.e. how do we human beings experience mercy? In Christianity, we have neither of these two contradictions, neither of these two problems. One, because we say man is made in the image of God, which gives us a point of reference by which we can then speak meaningfully about God being love, about him being merciful, without any problem. And two, because we say that, that God is a trinity, when we say that God is love, the Father has someone to love, the Son, the Son has someone to love, the whole... Spirit, the Holy Spirit has someone to love, the Father, and so on and so forth. So we don't have the internal contradictions that you have. And I invite you, I invite you to consider what you've heard, to reflect upon it, and to embrace something better. I'll leave the last word with you and then we can stop. Well, I would like to say thank you very much. I've been seeing your, your YouTube videos. I wanted to have a conversation with It was very you. pleasant talking with you. It was very good. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Uh, maybe next time we'll have uh, some other things to talk about. Have a think about what you heard today. Thank you very much. Take okay, care. See you. Take care. Thank Has you. anyone got any questions about what they heard today? Anyone got any questions about what they heard today before we wrap up? Nope. Okay. So guys, in terms of... In, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do a, a quick summary. This is the wrap up for the camera. I'll just go through briefly what the problem with Islamic Taweed is, or one of the many problems of Islamic Taweed. They're saying that, that, that the gulf between God and man is so great that our mercy is not like Allah's mercy. If that is true, that Allah's mercy, not his being, but his actual mercy, is ontologically different than our mercy, then that means we have no point of reference by which we can communicate meaningfully that Allah is merciful. It doesn't make any sense because we have no point of reference to give that word definitional meaning. By contrast, Christians say that man is made in the image of God and because we say that man is made in the image of God, we have a point of reference by which we can speak meaningfully when we say that God is merciful because we can use how we understand mercy with us today. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that 
if you say that Allah is merciful, that God is merciful, every understanding of mercy requires a transaction between two parties. If you do, if you're a poor man, paperboy, and I come up to you because I'm a rich man and I give you money that you can never repay me, that is an act of mercy. If you do me wrong and I forgive you without demanding justice, that is an act of mercy and that requires a transaction between two parties. So when they say that Allah is Al-Rahim, that he is all merciful, that requires someone or something to be merciful too. Which means that when they then go and say that Allah is all sufficient, self-sufficient, dependent on no one for any of his attributes, that you have a contradiction. Because if you are all sufficient, that is all not partial. But if there is something which requires you to have someone else, then that means you aren't dependent on the someone else to be merciful too. Christians don't have this internal contradiction because we say that God is love. But then we say that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So the Father loved the Son. The Son loved the Father. The Father loved the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loved the Father. The Holy Spirit loved the Son. The Son loved the Holy Spirit. So we avoid the kind of internal contradiction that, that, that Muslims have within their concept of Taweed. And I invite you, if you can see the flaws of Taweed, the inconsistencies of the Islam, the logical inconsistencies of Islam, to stand upon something better, the Christian faith. And if you're a Christian, to be confident that when they attack our Trinity, when they attack our belief in monotheism, that we can have confidence, A, that that is a defendable position, which we're just about to go and do, and that B, their own deen, their own religion, isn't without its internal contradictions and problems. Anyway, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take care.